My name is Marianne Borma and I work in the Division of Radiation Health in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. I received my education in cell biology and radiation biology in the Netherlands and after that I came here to UAMS to work at UAMS. As a faculty member, my main role is to do research and I also teach in the pharmacy curriculum and in the graduate school. The research in our lab is focused on radiation-induced heart disease, which is a long-term side effect of radiotherapy of the chest if all or part of the heart was situated in the radiation field. So, for instance, uh, breast cancer patients who were treated in the past or also some patients with cancer in the lung or in the esophagus, they may have part of their heart exposed to X-rays from the radiotherapy just because the area that needs to be treated with radiation is situated so close to the heart. Now, radio radiotherapy uh, techniques have improved very much over the last decades, so that less normal tissue surrounding the cancer is exposed to radiation. However, in many cases of radiotherapy of the chest, the heart is still, at least in part, exposed, leading to radiation-induced heart disease. And the symptoms of radiation-induced heart disease include both changes in the vasculature, mainly atherosclerosis, but also injury in the cardiac muscle itself. And these symptoms, they mostly start to show 10 to 15 years after therapy, so that's a fairly long time. But because uh, more and more cancer patients are cured from their cancer and therefore live for a long time after their therapy, the long-term side effects of therapy receive more and more attention because they hamper the quality of life of these long-term cancer survivors. Now, there currently is no method to prevent radiation-induced heart disease from happening or to reverse it once it occurs. And we also know very little about the biological changes that happen in the heart after it has been exposed to radiation. And so our lab tries to identify biological mechanisms of radiation-induced heart disease. And for this purpose, we use basic research models. And one important aspect in these models is that we would like to measure cardiac function after irradiation. And one of the techniques that we use here is high-resolution ultrasound or echocardiography. And with this method, we can visualize the heart in great detail and we can obtain many different parameters of cardiac function. And we are now able to show changes in heart function fairly early on after exposure to radiation. And these functional measurements, we combine them with, amongst others, histopathology and also with molecular analysis. For instance, we look into the expression of certain genes and proteins and all of this, uh, we do this to determine which pathways are involved in radiation-induced heart disease. So currently, for instance, we're interested in the Kelly Cray and Kynan pathway, and also in the role of transforming growth factor beta, which is a protein mediator that is produced in the heart and that affects the behavior of many cells it comes into contact with. And we're also interested in the role of particular cell types, such as endothelial cells and mast cells. And the final goal of this work is to use this knowledge that we obtain from the biology of radiation-induced heart disease to develop a treatment that may prevent or even reverse this side effect of radiotherapy so that we can make radiotherapy of the chest safer and more effective.